I don't even know if I want to watch this. Apparently, there's some drama on the internet about Mr. Beans, too. I believe has the most subscribers on YouTube, perhaps the entire planet. I don't know exactly what's going on. I will watch a little bit of this, but if I feel salad vibes or like I don't want to watch this anymore, I will probably turn it off. Yeah, I'm feeling like, right, I'm feeling like this could be salad vibes, but uh, let's see what is happening in the Mr. Beast world. The new Mr. Beast allegations are absolutely disgusting. Mm. So the ex-employee who exposed Mr. Beast, Dog Pack, has finally released his part two video titled, I work for Mr. Beast, he's a sociopath. And this video goes over some very serious allegations by a former contestant named Jake Weddle. Now, legal disclaimer, I cannot confirm any of this. This entire video is covering their allegations and I'm simply reporting the news. So some of the things being alleged are Jake Weddle was borderline tortured in a Mr. Beast challenge called 100 Days in Solitary Confinement. Apparently, he was not even allowed to see sunlight and had bright studio lights on him and cameras 24-7 so that he... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Isn't that part of the challenge, though? Am I wrong about that? Aren't they supposed to, for the money, isn't... Unless he says... I mean, can't he tap out? Isn't the whole thing that he can tap out and not get the money? Did, what did the dude tap out like did this dude did this dude tap out and they wouldn't let him leave wait 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 question to everybody first off because i'm not aware of what even is going on here i'm just i'm just coming into this cold turkey i don't know any idea what's going on here but but is it the whole premise that like you accept the challenge for the money and then if at any point it gets too rough can't you just tap out that's that's what I would assume. So didn't the dude just like say, okay, enough of this and I can tap out and just leave? Or did he tap out and Mr. Beast is like, no, motherfucker, you're staying in here. Like, that's what I guess I'm wondering is my first question to this. So apparently nobody in my chat knows what's going on. So maybe in YouTube, let me know. Light and had bright studio lights on him and cameras 24-7 so that he couldn't sleep which may potentially fall under sleep deprivation, which is a form of serious torture. Apparently there- Wait, 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 wait. Except the fact that you're getting offered like an amazing amount of money and he accepted the challenge. So in essence, he put himself up to it. So my only thing would be is if this motherfucker tapped out and they wouldn't let him leave, then I would be like, holy shit, that is evil. That is where I would say, okay, Mr. Beast is fucking evil incarnate. He is the devil. If this homeboy is tapping out and he's like, listen, I'm done. I don't want the money. Get me the fuck out of here. And they wouldn't let him leave. Then that is some sadistic saw shit. That is some saw shit. Like, like is that what happened here? fall under sleep deprivation, which is a form of serious torture. Apparently, there was an incredible amount of pressure to stay and complete the challenge as well, even when he was falling apart, so to speak. Another allegation- Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm gonna keep watching. ...is that Mr. Beast had a convict- Is that the same dude? Is this dude- This dude here? Oh my god, he lost a ton of weight. Did they- what they do? Starve him to death too? was falling like, apart wait, so wait, to speak hey. another allegation is that mr pounds. beast had a dude i'll take the challenge i need to lose 50 pounds right now man dude if i if i come out looking felt I, I would consider them like job well done thank you i, I need to lose some weight for a real convicted sa offender with a child victim what? on the mr beast team and on camera in one of the videos as well which is absolutely insane for a chance Oh, you need to vet your people, bro. You could not be like hundreds of millions of subscribers and letting in people like that. That is insanity. What is going on over there? This dude's giving out millions of dollars to people and he can't have enough money to figure out how to vet his own staff. He has sexual offenders and his staff. What is going on? That is a no, no. You need to what? Whoo channel whose viewer base is full of kids. Dogpack is also working on a part three video that goes into further horrible accusations regarding potentially covering up essay situations. Uh, also, I know Mr. Beast's secret CEO has been practically like harassing my people on, you know, hey, what this guy's eyes, man, this guy looks totally sketchy. This is coming from a dude with weird eyes. I mean, look at my eyes. I'm, I got weird motherfucking eyes. And I'm telling you right now, 
You know, you can't trust a person with weird motherfucking eyes like that. Look at these eyes, man. Like, what is going on with this dude? <laughs> I don't trust this dude. It's already sketched to me. Like, I don't even feel like this guy's telling the truth about anything. Just looking at his eyes like, ah, eh, don't ever listen to me, too. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. What's in part two? What, what does he know? So I will just tell you, James, what will be in part three so you don't have to harass my people. It will be about serious He's got allegations of, of sexual misconduct uh, in the company and your direct involvement in covering up those crimes. During the 100 Boys versus Girls video, uh, I have people corroborating the same story that the, the camera guy who gave the girls a drone was making some girls feel uncomfortable. You trap these girls in a circle and, and make them sleep on rough turf and, and get them high on paint fumes and then, and then you try to f them. All right, so that's obviously going to be a nightmare for the Beast PR team, but let's just go over this situation, <laughs> see what's- Wait, wait, wait. Don't these people have to sign like a waiver when they start these, these fucking weird ass contests that Mr. Beast has? You know, Mr. Beast is doing these this weird shit. A couple of weeks ago, I saw one, or a week or so ago, I saw one where he put him in like a um, a fallout shelter or something of that nature. He, he's he's definitely increasing. He's he's raising that bar of competitiveness for sure. Like you, he's 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 definitely pushing the envelope, man. What? What's going on? But, but don't they all have to sign like a waiver or something? Starting with Jake Weddle's experience filming the solitary confinement video. I'm Jake Weddle. If you, if you know me from Mr. Beast, I'm I'm a deep cut. I'm in a few of the videos. Sometimes maybe purposefully kept to the shadows a little bit. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm in the cutting room floor. A lot of the time. The pitch is a uh, hundred days in solitary confinement, uh, but don't worry, like you only have to last like 30, we have like a video. And they're pitching it like a, oh, it's, at first it's gonna be like a luxury vacation. You're gonna have like a hot tub and your ice cream. Wait, 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 are they faking the content? Are they faking the content? So like the dudes, like, so the video is entitled like a hundred days of confinement, but like they're telling this dude that like he only has to do 30 days. First off, that is counterfeit content. What is going on here? Machine and like part of the video is gonna be you deciding like what 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 items am I gonna get rid of you know today and it's like the choice. They were like uh it's only gonna be bad for the last like five days tops when you have like nothing left. You're the first. It's gonna be like a breeze for most of it, and uh, by the end of it, after thirty days, you're gonna get. $300,000 because it's $10,000 a day. Okay, so apparently it was pitched as a sort of vacation, uh, a really easy challenge where you can earn 300 k where you'll have a hot tub and an ice cream machine. But then he goes on to explain the alleged absolutely horrid conditions on the set, saying that it smelled really bad and he didn't even get to sleep and was suffering from insomnia even after the challenge. And uh, I mean, they, they just freshly painted the set. You could smell it, you know? Which that's probably not good, you know, the smell of fresh paint in your surroundings for the next XYZ time. A hot tub okay, is not cool. connected to a filtration yes. system. Down here, Even asking for some days, eggs. it's gonna stick. <laughs> and the ice cream machine, let's talk about that for a second. The ice cream machine has two modes. On, and off, reeking of smelly, dairy, mildew. Like, so I got to choose which sense was assaulted at a time. I, I couldn't have all of them good. They weren't, they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them. Watch out, Pepe threw all the, all the clothes on the floor, uh, Devin. Would you tell them that Pepe's real? Just tell them that Pepe's real already, that you gotta walk around him because he threw clothes all over the floor. There you go, see? Devin confirmed Pepe is real. They said, can we like have like nighttime hours? You know? And they said no, because it would fuck up the time lapse shots. The time lapse of what? Me sleeping? Or me not sleeping? Okay, I got no access to sun. I got no access to clock. I don't know, like, the, the, the lights are on me all the time. I wasn't sleeping. First off, that's kind of freaky because like you're going into a solitary confinement situation, which I probably wouldn't do for any amount of money, but like $300,000 is a lot of money, number one. But like not having the clock there is like every horror movie that I have ever seen in, in situations like this where like they put themselves in a game show uh, environment where you can win lots of money, but then like it actually is a, like a, a murder room. <laughs> like a saw situation. Like I don't think I'd ever put myself into that situation, number one. Uh, you know, although it is Mr. Beast and you've got proof of people winning. So you kind of be like, OK, I'm going to go into this. And, you know, like, what is that? Three hundred thousand dollars for a hundred days. Let's do the math. Pepe calculator. Three hundred thousand dollars. 
uh, divide it by what a hundred days. So I'm making like three three grand a day. I mean that was easy math. You know I shouldn't need a calculator for that. Uh, but okay, three grand a day for dealing with uh, smelly stuff, and you know like I would I would etch the days on the wall. But then I'd have to literally count in my head, and that would probably drive me insane as well. I don't know. Would you guys do that for three hundred grand? Would you guys go into like solitary confinement for like a hundred days? I don't know. I don't know. I think I could do it. I don't think it'd be an issue. Like I would go in and I'd come out with like three hundred grand. You know, I don't know what this dude you know had to deal with. It, like he should have just tapped out. What? Here's my again. Here's my question. Can't homeboy tap out? Yeah, the lights are always on would kind of screw with me, but I'm a heavy sleeper though, Daft. I could I I grew up in the metal scene, dude. I've I've actually fallen asleep in like very crazy environments before, so I think I'd be okay with that. <laughs> but like my whole point is can't this dude tap out? Isn't there a point at which the dude can just tap out and be like, "Okay, that's it. Peace out. I can't do this anymore." And they just let him go, right? Or did they force him to stay in confinement? Now, that's what my question is. If they, if this dude never tapped out, that's on him. If this dude tapped out and they kept him down there in confinement, that's screwed up. Yeah, Mad Style says, yes, the difference in this vid is he was pressured to stay. Okay, pressured to stay versus like here's what I would do if I was in this dude's situation and I wanted to leave this place I would say you are legally liable to get me out of this room or I will sue you for all the money that you have get me out of this room this is a statement get me out of this room or I will sue you for everything that I have I am tapping out of this event nothing you can say or nothing you can do can ever make me want to stay tap out tap out boop tap out boop boop tap out T tap out Tap, 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 tap out. And if they did not let me out within that day where I was saying tap out all day, then that would be fucked up. That would be like, what is going on here? They're keeping me now. And then it turns into a horror show. That's when it turns into a horror show. I would, that is when it would be freaky. So if that is what happened to this dude, okay. Like that's effed up. But. If homeboy never tapped out, what is going on here? That's my question. Like, I got him in a courtroom right now. That's what I would say. That's how I would judge the situation. I, I could not sleep. And I, I have insomnia problems now. Um, but I, I, they might have started there. And I go up to my friend, my, my, my good friend. He's crying. Shit. And I go, I, go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. Okay, tap out. Like, right? Okay, that's at the point you tap out. Like, if the dude can't handle it, you tap out. Right? We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. <laughs> okay, Daft is saying he did try. That is what he said. Well, I didn't hear that, Daft. I heard that he was pressured to stay. I didn't hear, like, I said, I want a GTFO. Like, I have not heard him say that during this whole, what point? Link me, link me the point at which he says, I am done. I quit. I just heard, like, I was pressured to stay. Okay, you were pressured to stay, but did you tap out? Yeah, that he needed to be a team player, but did he tap out? <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying, Daft? Did the motherfucker say, I am done? Okay, is he getting to it? Okay, thank you, Daft. Thank you. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> 24 hours breaking the Geneva Convention, I guess, is what we're doing. He said, uh, Jimmy said, uh, can you say to the camera, how thankful you are that now you can pay back your student loans. That is absolutely awful to hear. So he's claiming that they allegedly almost tortured him and then asked him to basically thank the cameras for it. Now, I don't know if it actually <laughs> qualifies as like a war crime because that seems a bit much, but regardless, it is a horrible thing to do to someone, especially from supposedly the kind-hearted god angel that is supposed to be Mr. Beast, right? And if this is true, it could be a serious problem for Mr. Beast See and the, the whole team because here. there's been a ton of allegations of people accusing Mr. Beast of using money to get people to do things that they wouldn't normally do in a sane
It's their whole. It's the whole premise of his show. Have have people not watched Mr. Beast over the years? No shit, he's doing that. He's been doing that since day one. He doubles up every time. He started off with his first video where he asked this dude. This dude said, "I'm gonna give you five thousand dollars to advertise a video." He says, "Okay, great, but make it ten thousand. So he doubled up right there. The guy said, "Oh my god," he said, "No, if you do ten thousand, I promise you, I won't get you views." He gets ten thousand, boom, and then what he do? Takes the ten thousand, re does so twenty thousand. Then he takes the twenty. He goes 40, 40, 80, 80, 160, so on, so on, and so on. The guy doubles down every single time. Every single video from Mr. Beast is about, like, doing crazy shit for money. Like, what planet? Of course, this is what he does. This is what he's done from the very beginning. And now people are, like, upset about this shit. This shit has been happening since the beginning of time with this motherfucker. <laughs> Yes, and, and Daft says, well, it's a war crime if they were held without being able to leave. Absolutely what I'm saying, Daft. Absolutely, 110% what I'm saying. If this motherfucker 110% said, I am done with this shit, get me the fuck out of this shit, and they kept him, then that is completely fucked up. That is a war crime. That is fucked up, and that should be held accountable. And Mr. B should be ashamed of himself. What in the actual... That if that actually happened, all I'm hearing from this dude so far is like they pressured me to stay. It was a horrible environment. There were lights on. You know, he's giving you the whole thing. It smelled. But like I haven't heard yet that this motherfucker said I wanted to get out and they forced me to stay. He said they pressured him to stay. Like did he say on tape? Did he fucking say get me out? Did he look in the camera and go get me out of here? Get me out. Get get me out get did he do that and they kept him because then if they did that boom bye bye mr beast you're done mind i mean presenting it as a vacation and then turning it around into borderline torture is just not a good look At dude you know when you're going into these things that you're getting into a situation that's ultra competitive you know what you're getting into you if you got a brain you know this shit's gonna be crazy when you're going for it you're going for like hundred thousand dollars five hundred thousand dollars million dollars you like you know what you're getting yourself into you if you have a, a higher level iq you know what you're getting into <laughs> At the very least, if they ever do something similar in the future, it needs to be monitored by some safety authority or something because the reckless disregard for the health and safety of contestants in these challenges is just ridiculous at this point. Even from the recent Beast Games allegations with people claiming to be injured, denied medication, and much more. I mean, you just can't subject people to this type of stuff and say that it's perfectly okay because they signed up for it. Well, I mean, it seems like they didn't know what they signed up for. And when you dangle life-changing money in front of them, it's going to affect their judgment drastically. Now, here's some text messages he shared as well. Hope you're doing well, man. That video you uploaded is money. So good. I appreciate. I'm doing better physically. Mentally, I'm still kind of in a place. I still can't sleep. I've slept five hours in the past three days, marathon included. I don't know what's wrong with me. Lots of thinking, too much, one might say. Hope they're taking care of you where they can. I mean, I was kind of shocked they didn't pay me for the full 25, 30 days. They paid me what I made up to that point. Like, even when we have to pull the plug for my mental health, the mechanism of the game is still at play. I'm just happy to be out. I still can't walk well, but it hurts less. <laughs> off camera breaks, lights off at night, visitation, take the marathon out. Marathon is a video in itself. You can't expect someone to exert themselves like that for 45 seconds of content. The challenges really made it feel dehumanizing. Felt like a parody of Mr. Beast. I felt like the homeless guy they could exploit. Okay, so Mr. Beast defenders are obviously going to be like, suck it up. You signed up for it. Oh, you want to win 300k without it even being hard. Well, you know, that's one way to look at it. But also, is it really necessary to not turn the lights off at night? I mean, that part is cut out of the video, so why would that be needed? I mean, why make a guy who hasn't run a marathon run a marathon till he allegedly has like blisters and stuff like that and his feet are hurting so bad? It's just kind of hurting him for entertainment. He goes, you're gonna, you're gonna run a marathon. <laughs> you're gonna do the two, 22.6K, whatever it is. And you're gonna do it on that treadmill over there. People who run marathons train forever and it's still hard. Did you try to say no? Like, did you have a choice or? There was so much pressure to just do it, just do the thing, you know? You, you, you know? And I, if, if I refuse, it's just, oh, that's the whole video. I guess the budget's, you know, so much money up in flames because Jake said he wouldn't want to do the thing. All right, I got off the treadmill. 
Oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like, you wouldn't believe. It's all over, just these big red... <laughs> How long did he make this motherfucker run on a treadmill for? What is going on here, man? <laughs> what is going on here? I couldn't, I couldn't walk. My, my, my muscles were like, just... Get the lactic acid. I, I I got off the treadmill and then the people that came in to like ice my feet and you know, make sure I was good. Then that's when I was like, I'm done. I can't. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Oh, I'm out. I don't know. In my opinion, <laughs> this is like real life Squid Games almost, man. What is going on here? Did Jimmy take a book out of Squid Games and he's going so hardcore on this shit? Like, run, you son of a bitch. You run on that treadmill till I'll tell you you're done. You run. You're my personal hamster. <laughs> like, what is going on, man? What is going on? I mean, there's just better ways to do it. I don't even mind if you just tell everybody, hey guys, I'm being open and honest. I'm faking the videos. I'm making it a TV show. I'm going to be turning off the lights at night and giving him a break, right? But instead, he has this weird obsession with insisting that everything is 100% real and authentic, and that ends up hurting people, it seems like. Now, in the future, if you do actually fake it, then, you know, let people know so they don't call you a liar as well, right? And so that contestants are not misled about the challenges. Now, Dogpack also shares an internal document in Mr. Beast where he basically shows the company spirit. And one of the sort of instructions there is that no does not mean no, which is an insane phrase to use, but it's not actually talking about consent. It's more like if I tell you to do something, keep trying to do it, even if people say no. <laughs> he could have said no. He could have left at any time. I want to show the segment from uh, an internal okay, document here we on go. Mr. Beast called How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Production. Okay, here we go. Here, here we go. Here's the meat and potatoes. This is what I'm talking about. Specifically on page 19, there's a paragraph called no does not mean no. Oh, oh shit. Oh, that's, oh man, that, that is clearly bad. That is not a good look for Mr. Beast. Like that, that right there, that's going to get you fucked in court. That, that's not good. You do not want that in the Mr. Beast handbook written down a black and white, man. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. This is not good to have in your Mr. Beast handbook for your employees. This should really have been thought of better. <laughs> this should have been thought of better. Wow, dudes. Wow, this is crazy. Already insane uh, because it's sort of, it seems to be co-opting the popular anti slogan, which is a terrible look given the allegations that are going to be coming out very soon. Uh, it reads, When dealing with people outside Mr. Beast Productions, never take no at face value. If you need a store to buy everything inside of, and you call the local Dollar Tree, and the person that answers says, no, you can't film here, that doesn't mean shit. Talk to other employees and see if there are fans, or if any have kids that are fans. Try talking to their boss, their boss's boss. Have me DM them on Twitter, try their social team. If after all avenues are exhausted, you're still left with a no that doesn't mean don't try the other dollar trees because the manager of those could be huge fans and willing to bend the rules basically what i'm trying to convey is what we call pushing through no don't just stop because one person told you no stop when all conceivable options are exhausted this is one of the tools that when combined dramatically improve your probability of success one when producing here and it's it's referring to going out and pushing advertising and pushing out skit ideas for people in the mr beast uh, business model to go out and be productive in terms of like not saying no to in that instance, but it also can translate into other things. This is a bad policy to have or to put in print because it can be, it can be translated as going into basically if somebody's saying no on the show, like, no, I'm done. No, no more. I don't want to do it. That it could also be translated into the other end of the business model, which is like when when our people say no for these um, tournaments or these events, that they don't really mean no. Don't take no at face. Don't take it at face value. Push through. Make them continue to do the the for the content's sake. So that's just going to be that is exactly how it's going to be interpreted. And that's how it's going to be presented by a lawyer when, when he starts getting legal action. This is going to be crazy. This is going to shut him down, man.
and when producing here all right so it's basically saying keep trying to make the thing happen and don't take no for an answer which is okay except the phrase is a very weird choice and probably made a lot That's of women insane. uncomfortable but all right now dog pack also claims that this sort of mentality might lead to some shady business behind the scenes for example if an employee is pressured to make something happen or you know they might lose their career for it then they might be incentivized to tell half truths or lie about small details to get certain things to happen that would normally not happen anyways now we get to in my opinion one of the most concerning parts of the entire video where jake says that go. the mr beast team has been working with a convicted sa offender oh, Jesus. well there was a known offender registered offender convicted offender on the registry and everything who worked there from what i hear i, I can't confirm or deny from what i hear He's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. And they knew that. And he's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people. And they oh, covered no. up the fact that not only did he work there, but he was like the manager when it oh, all started. Done. Wow, that is absolutely horrific if that is true. Um, getting those vibes of, I don't know, Dan Schneider, Nickelodeon, all of that weird stuff. I oh, mean, yeah. how did this possibly ever happen? Nobody who has done that type of stuff to a child should ever, ever, ever be allowed anywhere near kids or to even work on a channel that has so many wow, kid viewers. Wow, it is just wow, wow, completely wow. unacceptable. Again, I'm praying Mr. Beast did not know about this, but still, it is bad because it is his responsibility to monitor who is being employed under him and at his company. Now, it gets really bad when we allegedly have video footage of the guy in a Mr. Beast video. He'll be in videos. He'll be in thumbnails. He's, he'll be around. And whenever he, he, he is, he's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? Why would you conceal your face? It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? That you are in registered under? And that your face could be looked up on a thing? How much more can you literally cover up a offender? It's like, why, 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 do you, why do you call him Delaware? I didn't, I didn't know. Apparently they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. I mean, what is... Oh, Jesus. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, man. Wow. What is going on? Why is a guy like that just randomly in your videos with a mask on? I mean, allegedly, they call this guy Delaware because he's banned from Delaware hey, Nikki, for his disgusting morning. crimes. I mean, that's insane. Why are people joking about that? I mean, I, I'm hoping there's some other story to that nickname because that sounds really bad. And it actually gets a million times worse because a very concerning clip of Mr. Beast allegedly referring to this man by his disturbing nickname, Delaware, is in a video. Credit to Upper Echelon for his video here. During the I spent 24 hours straight in insane asylum video, in which Mr. Beast did not spend 24 hours in any such thing himself, Zorro is a main contestant. However, at nine minutes and 12 seconds, Mr. Beast himself states, don't touch Delaware's cracker during one of the joking meals that they were given. He's after my guy. Don't touch Delaware's cracker. Don't touch Delaware's cracker. That simple innocuous slip presents a very big problem. If Jake Weddle's testimony is accurate, which I believe it is, having compared the height of Delaware, or Zorro, to that of Chandler, as well as eye color, hair color, weight, facial features, etc., it all checks out. If Jake Weddle's testimony is accurate, it means that not only was there a convicted offender working at Mr. Beast, convicted of explicit acts with a victim under the age of 11, by the way, but his nickname was the state in which those crimes occurred, which Mr. Beast himself openly used. I mean, if this is all true, this is some really sick stuff. Why are they joking about that name if that is the story behind it? Why is that man allowed on set when he has a criminal record for one of the most heinous crimes? I mean, in my opinion, if you're going after minors, that is just absolute bottom of the barrel, absolutely horrid stuff. And this has got to be by far the worst allegation yet. I can't believe it's gotten worse than the illegal lotteries and everything else. Allegedly, they're trying to expunge his record too to cover it up. Also, apparently before this phone conversation got recorded, the person on the other end of the line said that the Mr. Beast team was actually trying to expunge Delaware's record uh, off the registry. Everyone at your company knows, but somehow you don't know. Um, I, I think that needs more of an explanation than just saying 
I didn't know. Well, how didn't you know? How, how did this person get into the company and, and you know, a company that makes content for children and, and is around children? So yeah, Jimmy, I think we need an explanation from you. Or Honestly, it is your responsibility as the leader to make sure nothing like this is happening at your company. I mean, I get it's big. I get there's a lot going on, but this is ridiculous. First, we had Ava Chris Tyson. Then we had a host of other allegations with the legal lotteries, beast games. Who is Ava Chris Tyson? What happened? What happened here with this girl? What'd she do? <laughs> what did this, like, what is going on in this organization, man? They need like an HR person. They need to hire some people up in here for real. What is going on? They need to vet their people for God's sake. Y you're giving away millions of dollars on videos and you can't spend any money to vet your, your, when, when you're bringing in people to interview people and figure shit out like that is insanity. Oh my God, really? Oh my God, let's go. Jesus Christ, what is going on? Ava Chris Tyson. Then we had a host of other allegations with the legal lotteries, beast games, all of that. And now something like this. It is so concerning for the biggest channel in the world to have uh, potentially an offender on their I can't, team. I can't even do this anymore. This is ridiculous. This is craziness. This is disgusting, man. I can't even, I can't even finish this. This is too much, man. <laughs> Warning, incoming salad vibes. This is insane. Shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. Just shut this down. I I think Mr. And Mr. Beast is gonna implode from this shit. There there's this is just ridiculousness. This is ridiculousness, man. Craziness. Craziness. Like wow wow 